pubs, from my observation, are the most important yet underrated elements of Kicklips. But why? Why do you even have to pop in the first place? To jump? Really? Please be honest. Isn't that because you think your board doesn't flip fast enough and you think you have to let your board have longer time in the air? Or isn't that because you're afraid of landing primo and rolling your ankle? Trust me, I know. Those are my reasons. Let me ask you this question then. What if your pop is the reason why your board doesn't flip fast enough? And what if your very effort to pop as hard as possible is the reason why you can't kickflip? In other words, do you really have to pop as hard as you do right now? You are watching Why the Trick, and today we are going to study a trick scientifically. As you can see in my videos, my kick clips are not high. It is true that I can't pop so high, but it is also true that I'm intentionally trying not to. Can you guess why? Analysis. Let's take a look at the basic physics. A skateboard is a solid object, which means when you apply a certain amount of force to one side of the object, in this case a tail, the other side of the object, in this case nose, correspondingly moves. This means how hard you pop determines the amount of energy the nose will have, which you will have to offset with your front foot by the time you flick it. In the previous video, we learned the amount of energy we need to flick is only 3 kilograms, while kicking a soccer ball requires so much more energy, making it 150 times stronger. So the point is, if your legs are so strong like that, and can generate enough energy to kickflip, how come you can't flip a small object like a skateboard? You might have already realized, but that 3 kilograms theory applies only under the condition. The nose is not going up anymore. In this case, consider the blue line is the force of the nose to go up. So, as you pop the tail, the nose gains energy to go up correspondingly, which eventually decreases down to zero by the time you finish flicking it. In fact, the energy just does not disappear all by itself. You slide your front foot against the board, and that actually helps your board lose energy to go up. Let's take a look at an example when you pop too hard. So you pop the tail excessively forcefully, and correspondingly, the nose comes up strongly. Notice the force of the nose still lingers even after meeting the front foot. Once again, you have to offset the energy of the nose with your front foot while flicking it. And this is the very reason why it feels heavy to flick. And this is what I call the overpop. Let's summarize the pop flick relation as a conclusion so far. As you pop right, the amount of force needed to flick can be as low as 3 kilograms minimum. However, if you over pop, the energy of the nose can drastically increase, making it hard to flick. I mean, think about it. The very energy you just created by popping the tail is the reason why you can't flick fast enough. You might think your board doesn't flip fast enough and you have to pop the tail as hard as possible so that your board can secure enough time in the air. But that could be the reason why you can't flip it. What's important here is that the nose loses its momentum by the time your front foot is ready to flick it. If you stand on the ground and try popping the tail with your back foot, you can tell it's only your calf and ankle that you need to move. Just like flicking, it does not need so much energy to pop the tail. If you produce an exceeding amount of energy, you will have to offset it with your front foot when you flick it anyway. So it's really important to curve the amount of energy down to a certain level that is needed by your front foot. Execution. There are two body parts you have to pay attention to, to pop properly, thighs and calves. You may think it's obvious, but understanding the difference in their functions is crucial in the next steps. So please take a moment and think about it. When you approach, you crouch down, and the center of gravity should be somewhere around the red circle. And with the center of gravity holding your legs down, there is no way you could pop the tail without lifting your body. First of all, extend your thighs to lift the center of gravity of your body. Doing so makes enough room for your front foot to flick out. 
And to lift up your body, you don't have to move your ankle. You can see how I'm not moving it. And when the center of gravity of your body is about to reach its summit, that's the only time you can finally start extending your calf. You could just try to extend your calf of your back foot without extending your thighs. But this is what happens. In conclusion, to pop. First, you need to extend your thighs to lift up your body. Not only does it make room for your front foot to flick. With the center of gravity floating in the air, you'll be able to snap the tail light enough. Second, extend the cuff of your back foot to snap the tail after lifting the center of gravity in the air. Remember, you have to pop the tail to bring the nose of your board to your front foot. And to do so, this is as much energy as it needs. So try not to mix up the functions of your thighs and calves. Thighs, in fact, generate a lot more energy than calves do. So if you don't understand their differences well, you may wind up overpopping. So, in summary, number one, the very reason why you have to pop is to deliver the nose to your front foot. Number two, overpopping makes the flick feel heavy. Your front foot needs to offset the energy of the nose to go up upon flicking. But by overpopping, your front foot wouldn't be able to do so effectively, as the nose would still have excessive amount of energy to go up. Number three, to avoid overpopping, you have to lift up your body first so that you can use your calf to snap the tail lightly. By the way, if ever you are interested in the 3D models you saw in this video, they are available on my website. You can change their angle, play speed, zoom in and out of, display grid lines. There is a link in description, so please use them to solve your whys. Unanswered questions. I know there is a lot. Like, do I have to jump backward? Or what exactly does it mean to flick forward? Let's talk about those questions in the next videos. And also, please leave a comment in the section below. It is your wise that grows this channel. Until next time.